the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. Headed down to Queen City Park here in the backyard of the University of Alabama, but something just whizzed right past me. Wop bop a loop bop a wop bam boom! <laughs> Brent Venables just went right on by. Oh, leaky boy. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Live from Queen City Park in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. That's right, the backyard of the University of Alabama once again. When I get news that I think is very important to all you guys and gals out there in sporting land, all the common Joes and Sally's in the know, I have to jump in here. <laughs> Even if I'm out in the middle of the park somewhere. But, do you hear that sound? you hear that? I hear it. <laughs> There he went. There went Brent Venables right past old Linky Boy. Right into the top 15 recruits. You know, I hate to pat myself on the back, but, well, no, I don't. But I did call this. Now, while it is still early on in the recruiting season, I did say that. Oklahoma would end up in the top 15 or top 10 by year's end. And it looks like they're going to end up in the top 10 maybe sooner than that. As they're all the way up to number 13, while the team that was supposed to be dominating everybody and was supposed to be making Brent Venables and Oklahoma look like um, amateurs in recruiting is two spots behind Oklahoma. So it looks like that narrative has been quite <laughs> profusely shot to hell. And today, they're supposed to get another commitment, possibly from a four or five star edge rusher. Now if that happens, <laughs> well then, we could see Oklahoma in the top 10 before this summer's over. And then anything's possible. Because once that avalanche starts, like one of my buddies that I podcasted with the other day, actually he's a new buddy of mine. He may not consider me a buddy yet, but old Ty Hayes, uh, check him out. He uh, did Around the Table Sports on YouTube. As he uh, aptly said, once the avalanche starts, sometimes it just continues to go onward. And if these commitments keep coming in, Who's to say that Oklahoma won't end up in the top five in the crew? That may be a little bit of a reach, but I can see Oklahoma finishing seventh or eighth, which will be a lot better than what USC is going to finish if they don't hurry up and get an offensive lineman or two, or possibly even some defensive players in the mix. They're going to have all those skilled players, but nobody to block for them, and nobody to... Uh, Keep them from outscoring them if they have no defensive players. So it goes back to what I was saying earlier in the year. If you really think that because Lincoln Riley is an offensive coordinating genius to some people, that that's going to equal up to him just coming in and dominating all of a sudden, it's just not going to work like that. And it reminds me a lot, like I said, the Dennis Franchoni situation at Alabama. Where everybody thought Dennis Franchoni was going to come in at Texas A&M and just change the entire landscape. Now, at first, when Lincoln come in, all these players were like, man, this is the place to go. I mean, but he was getting transfer portal players from his old players. And it sort of was sort of misleading. But now these players are starting to catch on. They're starting to see the reports of how Lincoln Riley handled his situation in Oklahoma. 
And some of them's not real kosher with that. And the thing about Lincoln is he just continues to do these idiotic interviews, like he did one the other day with Greg McElroy on ESPN. And I'm not sure what ESPN's enamorment is with Lincoln Riley. <laughs> well, I sort of do. But they need to chill out because ESPN's are supposed to be a... <laughs> they're supposed to be uh, the ones that provide the programming for the SEC, and Oklahoma's going to the SEC. And all I can figure it is out is it's got some liberal type agendas to it because the city of Los Angeles, they want to see it re-arise from the ashes and whatnot. But it's just not, it's just not going to happen, man. It's not the way they think anyway. You got Lincoln, I mean, you got Brent Venables and, and Jeff Lebby and, and DeMarco Murray out there on the recruiting trail, just bang, bang, bang. And you don't see them doing all these idiotic interviews. This ain't like the first one he's done. He's been doing them throughout the year. And he gets on the Greg McElroy show to defend USC and to tell everybody why USC can be relevant again as a national championship contender. Why do you have to do interviews ad nauseum to convince people that? It sounds like you're trying to convince yourself to me. And if it just been one interview, like I said, it been, been different. But he's done, done like four or five different interviews. Telling everybody why USC can be relevant. You see Nick Saban out there doing interviews and, and, and talking about why Alabama can rebound from losing to Georgia. You see Brent Venables out there talking about, hey, this is why Oklahoma can can be relevant. No, because they don't need to explain why their teams can be relevant. They're going to get out there and coach their teams to relevancy. <laughs> They're just the ultimate warriors, just like my shirt right here. They're the ultimate warriors, man. They're out there on the recruiting trail, and they're letting uh, the season speak for their coaching. They're not out there doing interviews trying to hype themselves up. Lincoln Riley, man, I can see it now. I can see it in his eyes. The pressure's mounting, especially now that Oklahoma has passed right by them in recruiting. Sure enough, there's still a little bit of season left to go in the recruiting season but the point is it's already happened and with that i'm gonna get off of here like share comment and subscribe to this channel and as always kmca to all the other teams class is now dismissed